Okay, um, as uh, uh, Stephen, yeah, as Steve uh, mentioned, I'm uh, a Mark for Dark. I'm actually not the CEO. We haven't chosen roles yet. There's four of us in the company. We haven't chosen roles yet, but uh, essentially uh, I'm in charge of the electronics and production side of things. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about our, the first, pro uh, first product in our uh, pipeline, uh, the uh, active brace system, and um, yeah, it's with Airlix Medical. So uh, kind of going over some of what Edmund already talked about. Um, scoliosis is the 3D curvature of the spine with vertebral rotation. 80% uh, of the cases are idiopathic, so they have no known cause. Uh, two to 3% of the adult, adolescent population has scoliosis. So basically two to 3% of the population has that. Uh, and uh, it can lead to some fairly serious uh, complications, uh, mostly later in life. Um, a lot of people that you see that are bent over almost like that, um, it's because they had untreated scoliosis. So um, generally when you're a kid, you can kind of compensate, but as you get older, you get a lot of problems associated with that. Um, scoli serious scoliosis can also compress the, uh, the heart and the lungs and, and really cause a lot of problems. So uh, the first um, thing we'll talk about is um, bracing is, is the primary non-surgical treatment for scoliosis. Uh, and the goal, of, the goal of bracing is really to cease the curve progression. Um, it's not to correct. Uh, if you want to correct, you usually do surgery. Uh, however, we have seen some minor correction with bracing in the past. However, it is, it is mostly just about um, maintaining that curve and stopping it from proceeding on to the point where you need surgery. Um, effectiveness is often debated. And, and this is really uh, because it's, uh, it's one of those things where almost no, no orthopedic surgeon won't prescribe a brace because he doesn't want to take that risk that it doesn't work, but he can't really go and point to any single study that says it is 100% effective 100% of the time. Um, but it does seem to help um, a lot. So essentially every orthopedic surgeon prescribes it. There's a big study going on right now trying to figure out whether it actually is effective or not. And it's not going to be successful because no parent wants to not go through that process because the risk is that you have to go to surgery. Um, bracing is generally done for curves of 25 to 45 degrees. After 45 degrees, you're in your surgical candidate. Uh, surgery involves putting hooks and screws on vertebrae to affix the spine to a metal rod. Um, it's very invasive and expensive. Um, the, the price to the healthcare system in Canada, and it's about the same in the US, is about 100K. Um, there's a risk of infection, paralysis, and sometimes you might need to go in four or five times. Um, we have some patients that I've seen over the years that have actually had to go back and get the rods removed because of uh, um, infection five, ten years later. It's really quite surprising. Uh, and then there, afterwards, there's months of recovery requiring significant loss of flexibility. Um, or Sorry, required and a significant loss of flexibility. So essentially, these people now have a spine in their back. They can't bend over the same way. It's, it's really not... Uh, an ideal solution, but it's better than the consequences. Um, so the objective of our product is to help maintain the prescribed force levels on patients' trunks during daily activities um, with a minimal uh, user interaction and really in ensure the efficacy of the brace treatment. So ensure that that brace is working the way it should. Um, the initial work was done by the uh, research team at the Glen Rose. Um, the basic science has basically been moved into a product by our company. Um, it, we're actually quite fortunate inside our company. We've got electronics guys, we've got mechanical guys, we've, got, uh, we've actually got a really good money person there too. So uh, we've, we've been able to kind of really combine all the skills. Um, we build our own molds, our own plastic injection molds, our own electronics, all that kind of stuff. Um, we have been funded so far by mostly the company founders, but also by the MDDP2 program, which is now the MPDP program, and uh, an AET voucher that we're doing with ACAMP. So the way this works is essentially there's a, uh, an electronics package that uh, is connected to a force sensor which is embedded underneath of a pressure pad. Uh, the pressure pad has also an, on top of it a uh, bladder and what we do is we monitor the, bra the brace pressures inside the brace and we will inflate or deflate that bladder to attain a prescribed force. Um, our preliminary testing, we did a custom brace which was uh, built for a test subject uh, then the orthotist uh, established the target level for the uh, target force levels and we did two three-hour sessions of one sample per minute and uh, We got some data out of that one. The first session was no feedback and the second force uh, second with with feedback enabled 
And then we actually did a, uh, we built a few of them and, and did a, a small, very small clinical trial. Um, so getting into some of the data, this is what it looks like when you don't have any feedback. You can see the pressure, the, the, the ideal pressure is about 25 millimeters mercury. Uh, you can kind of see here we're all over the map. If you take a look at when you turn on the feedback, you really stay nicely in that zone a little bit more. So um, essentially, if you take a look here, you can kind of see um, the, the amount that that brace was worn at the target range was far more than what it was uh, before. And uh, this is also with the early technology. We've actually gotten it a little bit better with some of the new algorithms and, and ways of doing things. Um, so brace treatment is a very big commitment. Uh, it takes uh, about 22 hours per day for up to two years. Um, it can cause stress to both the patient. They got to wear this thing to school. They got to wear it to sleep. They got to wear it all the time. Um, and uh, simply prescribing a brace really doesn't mean the patient's going to wear it right. They can, they can wear it to, to be too loose, too tight. They can also, uh, it can loosen up over the day. Um, if they sit forward, if they sit backwards, it can just change all the pressures inside of the brace. So it's one of those reasons why I think they really haven't proven the efficacy of, well, th th whether it works, truly works or not, because everybody wears it differently. Um, so what we are doing is um, we are actually able to maintain that pressure inside the brace over the day so that you can actually see a change. Um, so the results of our sh very small clinical trial, which kind of made it so that we think that we can commercialize this, is the uh, implementation of the smart brace system increased wear time within the target tightness range by 20%. So that may not seem like a big number, but it means that you, we can maybe be able to take surgery from two in five patients to one in five patients, which basically means we get 20% less patients that have to go to surgery, which in places where they actually have to pay for surgery, like the States or other places, that is huge. Um, if we go to the economics of it, a scoliosis surgery is $100,000. A brace treatment with uh, active brace is about $10,000. Uh, so the savings to the patient or the health system is about $90,000 if the surgery is not required. So patients that would, be, would go through a brace anyways, we can, for a, a small incremental cost um, to them, uh, basically gain a 20% chance of having to avoid to s spending all that money. And more importantly, really, the, uh, complication, the, the risks involved with, uh, with um, the surgery. So looking at the market, uh, we believe there's about 200,000 devices per year worldwide. Uh, that's after quite a substantial uh, amount of time kind of proving the device, getting it into certain places. Uh, the target price is about $1,200 US and $1,700 US uh, between those two. Uh, this $1,200 US is more towards those places where we're going to actually start launching our product, where it's, uh, there's less regulatory barriers. Uh, the $1,700 US is the Canadian, Europe, and, uh, and uh, North America, or uh, US price. Um, the potential market size could be up to 350 million. Of course, that's not very likely to get to anytime soon, if ever. Uh, the North American size is 60 million. We think we might, uh, we might have uh, luck getting it into about 20 or 30% of the braces that are manufactured.